Dramatic Tag Team Breakups WWE has a history when it comes to separating tag teams in some pretty interesting ways. From throwing partners through barbershop windows, to turning on SHIELD Brothers on some random episode of Raw. Whatever the case, Vince McMahon sure knows how to break up a party something awful. Except for the times when he doesn't. While WWE is definitely known for this, there are also plenty of tag teams that manage to split up quite amicably, or in some cases, not at all. And these are the topic of this episode, because today... Thank you to all my wonderful Patreon supporters such as Bob86, Cool Ass Jack, and Anigo Montoya. The help is greatly appreciated, and if you're not a Patreon supporter yet and want to become one, then go over to my Patreon page. Thank all of you so much. Before we get into it, allow me to ask that you make sure that you're subscribed to this channel and that you give this video a big like because it really does help to support the channel, and I really do appreciate it. Alright, so before we get into the list, allow me to say that the rules for this are simple. This is specifically going off a WWE tag team, so if a team did split up in another promotion, that's not really what we're looking at here, although I did try to keep that in mind when composing this list. Furthermore, this is not saying that there was never any tension within the group, and that they never came to blows, and in some cases, even had matches against each other. But rather, the point of this list is that when these teams stopped partnering for good, it was done with no fuss, and no muss, and no major Fallout, which has definitely happened more times than people realize. Now, with all that being said, let's just get into the list. The Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase and Erwin R. Scheister began teaming up simply because, well, they both had money-related gimmicks. They started teaming in late 1991. Then, in February of 1992, the Natural Disasters manager Jimmy Hart would accept a bribe to sell their guaranteed title shot against the Legion of Doom to that of Money, Inc. The pair would go on to win the tag team titles at a house show on February 7, 1992 in Denver, Colorado. And what's even more surprising is that they managed to do this before official debuting on WWF television because the WWF desperately had to get the belts off of the Legion of Doom. We'll get to why later on. The two would continue to team even after losing the championship, that is, until the summer of 1993 where DiBiase entered a singles feud with Razor Ramon, and after losing at SummerSlam, DiBiase would be forced to retire, thus ending the partnership. However, they would reunite on occasion, such as on December 10th, 2007 for the Monday Night Raw 15th anniversary, where IRS was the last man standing in an over-the-top battle royal, that is, until Ted DiBiase made his way down to the ring and offered his former partner money in order to eliminate himself, which of course he did. Even though they started as bitter rivals from the end of 1998 all the way to the beginning of 1999, by the summer of that year, The Rock and Mankind would form a team known as The Rock and Sock Connection. Together, Foley and The Rock would win the WWF World Tag Team titles three times. Which is pretty impressive since they really weren't a duo for all that long. Dissension in the ranks started when Al Snow took a copy of Mick Foley's book and threw it in the trash, leading Foley to believe that it was actually The Rock who had done it. But once the truth was revealed, Revealed, the Rock and Foley would patch things up. The two would continue to sporadically team up all the way until Foley's retirement match at WrestleMania 2000, where he and The Rock did technically go against each other, but remember there was no formal blowout. And of course, both men would continue to reunite sporadically throughout the years, such as at WrestleMania 20, where they went against Evolution. Next we have the Bludgeon Brothers. Now, to be perfectly clear, Eric Rowan and Luke Harper have split up plenty of times, but when it comes to their last time teaming up as the Bludgeon Brothers, these two never had a formal falling out, and that's what I'm counting here. Anyway, the two would have their 135 day reign as tag team champions ended by the New Day. After that, it would be announced that Eric Rowan had suffered a torn bicep, and during his time off, Harper would undergo wrist surgery. Following this, the pair would not reunite again until 2019, and their final match together would be going against a team of Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan in a losing effort. After this, Rowan would be drafted to Raw, while Harper would leave WWE and join All Elite Wrestling. The 
The Godwins had actually been partnering together for longer than some people might think, with the two first teaming in the USWA in 1991 and then wrestling as the team of Tex and Shanghai in WCW starting in November of 1992. However, it wouldn't be until Mark Canterbury entered WWF as Henry O. Godwin that many people began to take note of him. Then in early 1996, Dennis Knight would become Phineas I. Godwin, forming the team that many of us know them to be today. The Godwins would win the WWF Tag Team titles not once, but twice. However, their second reign was only for two days in October of 1997, where they lost the belts directly to the Legion of Doom, which resulted in them rebranding on June 1st, 1998 where they became known as Southern Justice, using their real names instead. They quickly entered a feud with DX, however, shortly thereafter, Canterbury would have to retire, and Dennis Knight would continue to wrestle as the character of Midian. The pairing would get back together, but very, very rarely, the most recent of which was at last year's Survivor Series. The Brain Busters Tully and Arn of course started out as founding members of the original Horseman faction. They would win the NWA World Tag Team Championships twice, before giving their notice to Jim Crockett Promotions and leaving for the World Wrestling Federation. Once there, they would join the legendary Heenan family and start wrestling under the name The Brain Busters. They would win the WWF World Tag Team titles from Demolition and also drop them right back to Demolition. Their final match partnering together would be on an episode of Saturday Night's main event, where they took on the Rockers in a losing effort and were also fired from the Heenan family in the exact same show. Following this, they were set to make an appearance at Survivor Series 1989, however, Blanchard would fail a drug test, which would result in him leaving the company. And Arn wouldn't be too far behind him as he would also leave the WWF right after the pay-per-view and go back to Jim Crockett Promotions. However, because of his failed drug test, Blanchard would have a hard time doing the same. But with both of them being all elite, there's always the chance we might see them reunite yet again. The Nasty Boys have wrestled together in a lot of different promotions, from the AWA to Florida Championship Wrestling to WCW and of course the World Wrestling Federation, as well as TNA. But after leaving so many different companies on so many different occasions, they never did so after having a falling out. The wrestler known as Animal would very briefly wrestle as the Road Warrior before being partnered up with the wrestler known as Hawk to form the Road Warriors in 1983 for Georgia Championship Wrestling. The Road Warriors would eventually go on to wrestle for the AWA as well as wrestling in Japan and for Jim Crockett Promotions as well as WCW. Then in 1990, the two would sign with the World Wrestling Federation and get their names changed to the Legion of Doom since there was already another prominent warrior in the company. And once in the World Wrestling Federation, the Legion of Doom became the first tag team ever in history to win the three biggest tag team championships of the era. However, they would lose the titles to Money Inc. after Hawk failed a drug test. Both men would leave the promotion, but for a very small amount of time. Then, upon making their return, they would be repartnered with their original manager, Paul Ellering, and they would also be teamed with a weird puppet named Rocco. This puppet would result in Hawk no-showing and leaving the WWF, leaving Animal to team with Crush until a back injury would force him to go on hiatus before eventually leaving the WWF as well. They would return to Japan and WWF. WCW before making their re-debut in WWF in 1997. And during this run, WWE creative just couldn't help themselves as they did tease a breakup between the two, with both men even coming to blows after a loss to the New Age Outlaws. But after disappearing from TV for a while, they re-debuted as LOD 2000, this time with Sonny as their manager. However, she would leave the picture once Draw started entering the scene. And yet again, they would tease that the two would split up, but both men would voice their disdain for the angle and it would soon be dropped. They would leave the company in March of 1999. They would return to Japan yet again before also making appearances in TNA. The two would return to WWE yet one more time on May 12, 2003 where they would take on the team of Rob Van Dam and Kane. Too Sexy Brian Christopher and Too Hot Scott Taylor were originally wrestling together as the team of Too Much, before being repackaged as Grandmaster Sexy and Scotty Too Hotty, better known as Too 
Cool. Now, their eventual third member of this team, Rikishi, did of course turn on him when he went heel after being revealed to be the man who hit Stone Cold Steve Austin with a car. However, the specific team of Brian Christopher and Scott Taylor would remain together from 1998 all the way until 2001, where Scott would have to take time off in order to get neck surgery, and during this time, Brian Christopher would be released. Upon his return to the company, Scotty Too Hottie would eventually re-team with a once again face Rikishi, and Scott Taylor and Brian Christopher would of course also re-team as well down the line, mostly in the independent circuit. Luke Williams and Butch Miller had wrestled together as a tag team for a very long time, much longer than many people might think. First wrestling in 1966 as the Kiwis, and then wrestling as the New Zealand Sheepherders, as well as eventually wrestling as Luke and Butch Dudley, the two are probably best known by the names the Bushwhackers, which they started going by in December of 1988 when they joined the World Wrestling Federation. Then by 1996, the Bushwhackers were barely being used as the WWF just chose to run out their contracts. However, they did get to win their final match at a house show defeating the team of Justin Hawk Bradshaw and Uncle Zebakaya, better known as JBL and Dutch Mantel. And number one, we have the Hart Foundation. Now, these two men have wrestled each other and teamed before ever going to the WWF, as I have mentioned previously in another video. Now, the two are definitely most known for their run in the WWF as one of the greatest tag teams of all time. Although, many people have forgotten that by the fall of 1989, they did have an amicable split for a very brief amount of time to focus on their singles careers. Although, by that November, the two would find themselves re-teaming yet again, and they would win their second WWF World Tag Team Championship. They would hold on to the belts until WrestleMania 7, where they would lose them to the Nasty Boys. After this, Bret would enter a singles feud with Mr. Perfect for the Intercontinental title. Now, the weird thing about this is, not only did both men manage to break up not once, but twice amicably, but when it comes to the Hart Foundation as a whole, they just don't seem to do drama all that well as Nyhart would go on to form the new foundation with Brett's brother Owen until he left the company not long after. They would reunite two years later, only to have Nyhart leave the company yet again. But then, in 1997, the Hart Foundation would become a stable, with Brett as their leader, joined by both Owen and Nyhart, as well as the British Bulldog and Brian Pillman. They of course would all remain teaming together until the Montreal Screwjob, where most of them would leave the company for WCW. Well, there you go. 10 tag teams that never had a major falling out in WWE, but what are some more teams that you could think of? Let me know down in the comments. And please, make sure that you're subscribed to this channel and that your notifications are working. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, Dave knows.